Good to have you back with us. We're toning things down a little bit from our war coverage, but still, Evelyn, financial stress is a common and enduring problem, which has been exacerbated by global financial constraints such as the pandemic, recession, and high prices. A recent survey by Bankrate found that over half of U.S. adults report that money has a negative impact on their mental health, causing stress and anxiety. That's exactly right. So what are some common mistakes people make when trying to get their finances under control? And how do you get rid of those bad habits? I spoke to an expert for some finance tips. Joining me now is Nia Adams, a financial education instructor. Good morning, Nia. Good morning. It's great to have you. First, I really want to know what are some common financial mistakes that happen and how can we avoid them? So one of the biggest mistakes that we make is we create more debt than our wallet will allow. So that looks like we buy a lot of things and it's so easy to finance things now that we don't even think about the effect it might have on our income. So that's one of the biggest mistakes I feel that we make and then we avoid it, which is the second mistake. We get to a point where we feel like we should be at this certain point in our life and that doesn't match it. So we avoid it and push it to the side, but that ends up accumulating. And before we know it, now we have a big amount of debt and it's kind of holding us down. Now, what about you know keeping the goals? Because habits are hard to get rid of sometimes. Now to keeping those goals um, that you set for yourself, any tips on how not to be swayed? Oh, well, to be completely honest, you might be swayed because that's just a part of it. You're looking for a long-term solution, not a quick one. This is a marathon and not a race. So you might be swayed, You might, but you basically want to create more positive affirmations. So basically, you want to work to create a lifestyle. Not You're not going on a financial diet, and you don't want to think of it that way. So you want to replace your negative thoughts about money chores and make them more so money habits. So don't make a budget something that you don't want to do. Look at it just a window into your wallet. Then you want to think about, okay, I know this is very tempting to me, so let me think about this ahead of time on how I can do it. And lastly, I would say, don't completely deprive yourself. You want to have personal spending within your budget. Deprivation only is going to encourage you to splurge and then derail your financial journey. Mm, I think that's a very realistic way to look at that, so I appreciate you mentioning that you might get swayed. Um, now, going to the financial plan, how should people go about making one? Where to start? So first you wanna to start to be very realistic, open and vulnerable with yourself to decide exactly where you are and then be okay with that. That, you know, now you need to decide where exactly you wanna go because you remembering your goals and remembering your why is also something that's gonna help you in those moments when you are swayed. So remembering your why and why do you want to improve your finances? What benefits will it have? How will it improve your life? Then you want to create a budget. The budget's going to tell you what you have now, where your money is going, and it's going to give you a way to look and see what changes can I make to push me closer to my financial goals. And then you want to create a plan. So if I pay off this amount of debt and I improve my credit score by this amount, this will get me here. This is how you want to look at it. And then I normally recommend make it something that you can see regularly. Maybe make a vision board. Put it on your screensaver on your phone, something that's going to keep it front of mind so that it keeps you focused. Great points. Thank you so much, Nia Adams. I appreciate your tips today. Thank you. You know, I really liked how she said that it's just realistic to make mistakes and it's okay. She also said that, you know, this is the first thing she tells her clients when they want to recover from a mistake because many just beat themselves up over it. You know, one thing that really resonated with me was how she was talking about the lifestyle. You know, I cook some food at home to save a little bit of money and going out gets a little expensive and even buying retail is expensive too. Like if you buy wholesale, Almonds oh, could be yeah. four dollars a pound as opposed to like ten dollars or more. That's a, yeah, these are actually some really good habits to form, I think. Good point.